Oh, hello, everybody. This is Trun Trostru, uh, keeping making a talk on the circumpolar Wikipedia editions for Arctic Not Wikipedia, Wikimedia Language Conference. So here we go. Uh, I'll talk about the circumpolar languages, the literacy, their Wikipedia editions, and I will round up with a conclusion. So the languages. Um, this is a map where you can see to the left North America and to the right Russia and Europe. So the fam language families, if you look at it from that perspective, is in blue the Esk Aleut language family, the Nadene language family. Moving to Siberia, we get the Paleo Siberian languages, ragbag or languages not related to each other. The Altaic languages containing in brown, containing Turkic, Tungusic, and Mongolic languages, the Uralic languages in orange. And then we include one Indo-European language, Faroese, which is not on the map. So why just these languages? The idea is that these are relatively close to the North Pole and far away from, from agricultural <laughs> landscapes. And they are also minority languages in their respective countries. So Icelandic, Danish, Norwegian, Russian, they're out. Most of these languages are small. Uh, some of them uh, still have more than 10,000 speakers, which is considered a large language in, in this uh, respect. So these include Inuktitut, Central Alaskan Yupik, and Chippewan or Denesuchene in North America, Sakhatuvan, Buryad, Komi, Komi, Permia, Kakas, Karel, and Livy, and Evenki in Russia. You can see the color matching the color scheme. And for the Nordic countries, Faroese, Greenlandic, Mean, Kielia, North Sami, all are above that magic border. So turning now to literacy, uh, looking first at North America uh, and looking at the background. In, in North America, the minority languages have an old literate tradition coming, stemming from early missionary initiatives, creating syllabic scripts, and then the syllabic scripts were spread actually faster than the missionaries themselves. But uh, despite this eager um, use of, uh, of syllabic scripts in, in, in literacy, both state and church practice a very harsh assimilatory policy. So in Canada, there has been some shift in policy, especially in the Nunavut region with Inuktitut as an official language, official language from 2008. And their language policy is inspired by Canada's bilingual status with English and French. But still, for um, the First Nation languages of Canada, there is no strong bilingual practice. Uh, in Alaska, the situation is even worse. There actually hasn't been no shift in the policy. Um, University of Fairbanks, uh, there they have since the uh, 1960s initiated literal languages for all the languages, for example, for which there is a Wikipedia, but this work has not had any official support outside the university or the reservations. In 2014, uh, Alaska declared 20 Alaska native languages as co-official languages with English, but with actually limited consequences for anything. Russia, on the other hand side, there we had a Leninist language policy for the Soviet Union after the revolution that created during the first two decades literal languages, written languages for all the minority languages and including textbooks for schools, really with a focus upon the minority language. The two subsequent decades then saw orthography, orthography rules adjusted to Russian, uh, still a comparatively strong position of minority languages in education so that the whole education system for the largest minority languages was conducted in the language itself. And it was, you could say there was a balance between the minority language and Russian. And then during the last decades of the Soviet Union from Khrushchev and on, we had minority languages as language or instruction restricted to the first three classes only and more a Russian policy. So, but literacy was actually always in the focus. So for example, there was official signage and especially for the larger languages, administrative documents being bilingual. Since World War II, there have been newspapers, magazines and journals and mass media 
in the larger minority languages, less so for the smaller ones, but almost all of them, and certainly all the Wikipedia languages have had some literacy all the time. The post-Soviet era is a bit more complex. I will not go into that. Um, for the Nordic countries, um, Faroese uh, saw during the first half of the 20th century, uh, the uh, establishment of orthography and a long uh, struggle to make it uh, official that uh, was succeeded after the Second World War in 1948 and thereafter uh, uh, arise to dominating position in the society, still not as dominant as they said, for example, Icelandic, but, but pr probably the language in this set with the, the best and most extensive rights. Greenlandic more complex since they first had a whole century, mid 19th to mid 20th century, with Greenland really being the only language of education, the only language of media. They had their own teaching um, faculty uh, in Nuuk where everything was in Greenlandic and so on. Then uh, after the Second World War, there had was 25 years with a massive assimilation policy to Danish. All the Greenlandic teachers lost their jobs since they didn't have uh, um, a Danish teacher education, which you suddenly had to have in this new Denmark. Um, then from 1979 on, you had home rule, later self-government. Now Greenlandic on paper is the only official language, but Danish still has a strong position in education and administration with consequences we will return to. The Sami languages met a strong assimilation policy during the late 19th to late 20th century, but with increasing use of Sami as languages of instruction in school during last decades, but actually quite a weak literacy outside the school system. Well, for uh, novels and so on, there are some positive exceptions, but still weaker outside school. Kvedami and Kieli have young literacy and marginal position in education and elsewhere. So these are the minority languages in the Nordic countries. If you now look at social media, and I've been looking at groups devoted to discussing the own language on Facebook or in Russia, uh, on the contact, which is dependent to Facebook in Russia. So for North America, uh, here it says nine languages. These are the languages for which there are Wikipedia editions. And for all of them, the discussion is in English only. In Russia, for most of the languages, the discussion goes in Russia, in Russian. But for Buryad, Komi, Tuvan, and Kakas, the largest one, uh, um, the discussion is also in the minority language and partly also for Saha. For Nordic languages, most language communities discuss the matters in their own language to a larger or smaller degree. Uh, so summing up this part of the talk, North America has had the hardest assimilatory policy. And my uh, impression is that language is not a central part of being a Native American today. In Russia, the state always played a central role. So during most of the 20th century, its language policy was the most minority friendly in the world. The competition wasn't too hard, admittedly, but still. Grassroots language activism was and still is weak, as we know the situation for grassroots activities in Russia <laughs> for any, uh, in, in, in any, any type. In the Nordic countries, various degrees of state assimilatory policy was changed to a supportive one, partly as a result of political mobilization from the minorities themselves from the 70s and onwards. The role of the state is still strong, as it always is in the Nordic countries, but this time, with its modern state, it's more positive, whereas the strong state earlier had a ne negative influence on the languages. So let's now look at the Wikipedia editions. There are some 45 of them, and approximately half of them have more than 200 articles. We are not talking about millions of articles here. We are talking about 200 articles and onwards. So the blue dots here are Wikipedias with more than 1,000 articles. 
so as you can see, none of these big ones in America. Uh, in Russia, there are these republic languages, and in um, and in the Nordic countries, there are most Wikipedias of that size. But then there are some Wikipedias that where they have something has happened, and then most of the other Wikipedias, and they are mostly in Russia and in North America, they have less, and they are not shown on the map. They can, so if you now look, I already mentioned the republic languages. I have to explain that since in Russia, the largest minorities have their own republic. So the republics discussed here and also their languages are shown on the map. So we have Karelia with Karelian, Livy and Veps, and we have Komi with Komi, and we have Saha or uh, Yakutia, as it was earlier called, and then also Hakasia, Tuva, Buryata, they're further south, but no agriculture. So we, we we count them in as circumpolar as well. Okay, just to introduce the uh, Sami languages that we're going to talk about, the South Sami languages, in the Southern part of Scandinavia, the North Sami languages, mind you, being talked in three different countries and the United Sami, a quite small area in the Northeastern part of Finland, as you can see from the map. Also have a sh short look at the other languages we are going to mention in the Nordic countries. The dark blue in the upper left on the Swedish side, Meankieli, means our language. So it means actually don't mess with our language. Karelian, the, the um, violet one. And then Livy, according to some, a dialect of Karelian, but they have their own Wikipedia, so they are here. And then Vepsian also, the orange down right there. Okay, so let's now have a look at the Wikipedia editions containing more. And now I stop counting articles as to I count words, because words will then be word count will be a more reliable uh, measure. So what I've done here is I have showed Wikipedia editions with more than thousand words to the left for North America, then for Russia, and then for the Nordic countries. So. These three groups are extremely different. They are different. So first, North America, almost no content. Uh, and then uh, Russia, seven Wikipedias with between 200 and 800,000 words. So this is a very coherent field. They are quite similar. Then going to the Nordic countries, we have one outlier, which is Faroese with uh, uh, 1.4 million words. And then North and to a certain extent in Sami with approximately 100,000 words uh, come in as a group number two, whereas the rest are again quite marginal. So uh, looking now at the Wikipedia editions containing less than a thousand words, they were the ones that didn't make it to the map. For North America, we have Siberian Yupi, Klingit, Han, Gwichin, Dianus Uklina. In Russia, Ket, Enets, Ludic, Hanti, Dolgan, Udega, Orok, Negedal, Ulk, and Nord, Lulesam in Nordic countries. If I want to summarize the, this group of languages and Wikipedia editions, so it, I would say that they were started by non speakers outside the language community and they have no activity. And they have few speakers and weak or no literary traditions, so less than 1,000 words, meaning almost no content. Okay, so is then Wikipedia size due to the size of the language community? No, it turns out it's not. Uh, there's a low correlation between size of community and Wikipedia size. I actually had a look at it. So um, correlating number of articles to number of speakers, the correlation is as low as 0 0.37 and not 1.4. So we have one group of too few articles compared to the number of speakers, and these are the larger Russian, the larger Wikipedias in Russia. And then we have the group of too many articles compared to the number of speakers, which actually are the most active Wikipedias in the Nordic countries: Faroese, North Sami, Websen, and uh, okay, Websen of course is is in Russia, but they have contacts with with activists uh, in Finland. And then all the small ones are grouped to the left corner, so we ignore them. So 
Now, let's look at the people writing on the circumpolar Wikipedias, because <laughs> Wikipedias uh, editions, they don't just exist, they are written by people. And people writing on Wikipedia are somewhat confusingly called users. One should think that the writer is a writer and the one that they read is a user, but no, on Wikipedia, a user is the person who writes the Wikipedia. So uh, there's a statistics for last month's Wikipedia users, which is writers. So May this year, uh, I had a look at all the Wikipedias uh, and I looked at whether they had active users with language knowledge. So I looked at all the users, some of them had user pages claiming, mm, I don't know any Sami or Faroese at all. Uh, and other ones uh, didn't state that, but from their behavior, you could infer that they don't know the language. Either they don't do language stuff at all, or you can otherwise see that they don't know the language. So three and only three circumpolar Wikipedians uh, had more than one user. And that was Saha with 15, Faroese with nine, and Inari Sami with eight. So these are, at this moment, the active Wikipedias. And then there is one group with really low key activity, North Sami, Vepsian, Komi, and Buryad. They had one, one active user with language knowledge last month. And the rest, 80% uh, of the Wikipedias, had no active users with knowledge of the language. So, but they did have activity. So what about then the Wikipedia users that do not know the language or the Wikipedia they write on? There are such users. And I've been looking at them and I put them into three different categories. Some that do not touch the linguistic contents, the ones that do touch it, but know what they're doing. And the ones that write articles that have no clue at what they're doing. So let's have a look at all three. So type one or the careful Wikipedians. So one of those, is Glorious 93. Uh, he or she speaks French and Greek, uh, is active on most circumpolar Wikipedias, typically improves info boxes and pictures, is very active, but always restricts herself, himself, to non-linguistic content. Type two, the more knowledgeable Wikipedians. And one example is user uh, Frud Kazan, uh, which, according to his username, is Farhad Fatkulin, uh, whose mother tongue is Tatar, which is a Turkic language. And Farhad Fatkulin is active on many of the Wikipedias in the languages of Russia. And the language ed editions he writes on, they have grammars similar to Tatar. And he also is very restrictive on what types of articles he writes. It is uh, sort of schematic articles. And uh, as long as he is careful and understands the structure of the languages he is writing and copies from existing articles, this work may result in good articles. I say it that carefully because I don't know these languages either. So he could make mistakes, but at least he tries. So then we have the third type, which I would call the Wikipedia hijackers. So if you have a, one very active person, creating a Wikipedia or taking a Wikipedia with no activity, then it's very, very quickly becomes the dominant, in this case, Sot Sami Wikipedia. So for example, the Sot Sami Wikipedia is an excellent example, a sad example of this. For example, it starts out with the first word on the front page, which is Alkwe Bielie. The problem with Alkwe Bielie is that the Biele part, the Alkwe means beginning, but the Biele means part, like the half part of my face, for example, my, my right part or my left part, which in Norwegian is Sida. And then uh, Sia um, also has uh, another meaning in Norwegian, meaning page. So the problem now is that these two words are identical in Norwegian, not in English, part and page, but also not in South Sami, where there are Bielia and Sairwe. And unfortunately, this user then took the wrong one. So it is a beginner side and not the beginning page. 
but it gets worse. So for example, it says Songedit Tyrogadiasen. Well, it ends in DH, which means it's an infinitive. And the Songedit actually means to propose or to ask for someone's hand, will you marry me? The Norwegian word for that is ofri. But free, unfortunately, for the writer, is identical to a Norwegian adjective free, uh, which is related to the English free and has been borrowed into Salt Sami as free. So instead of saying a free encyclopedia, it says to propose, to ask for someone's hand, Wikipedia. Uh, um, so this is, of course, nonsense. And there are very many more mistakes on this page also, I won't go into them. But, but I mean, for the Salt Samis, this is really bad. So there is some organized help. Uh, the Wikimedia chapters, both in Russia and in Norway and Finland. Uh, in Russia, they have organized work for minority language, Wikipedias of Russia. In Norway, Wikimedia chapters are supporting North and Inner Isami. Let's have a look especially at the first group, the Russian ones. So for example, they have a series of Finno-Ugric Wiki seminars for the uh, Finno-Ugric uh, languages with a Wikipedia in Russia. So this one is from, I think it was a fourth one, in Petrozavodsk, which is the capital of Karelia. So here the, the focus was on the Wikipedia versions of this area. So one thing that this specific seminar uh, was able to establish was um, something called today's photo. So you can see here that all the minority Wikipedias in Russia every day has a new photo on the front page. You can see, I think it is a planet somewhere, but I'm not sure it could be a desert also. But anyway, it's the same picture in on the upper Wikipedia front page, Komi Permiak, and the lower one in Livy. You can see they have different alphabets, but still there, they have the same, the same picture, and that's because of this work. For North and Inari Sami, the Wikimedia uh, chapters in Norway and Finland are helping with templates, info boxes, with courses for potential writers, and so on. So looking more at the Wikipedia editions, I have grouped them here. Um, the blue uh, columns in this table are edits per article. So when, when for example, for Saha, it says, 27 or something, then it's edits per article. The orange ones, you have to time take time 100. It's a, it's a bit strange, but I wanted them into the same table. So for example, for Saha, it says 130, which means 13,000 articles. Okay, so again, we are able to group the Wikipedias into different types. So we have the group of many edits and no content the Inuit Wikipedias, Inupia, Greenlandic, and Inuktitut. So there's a very small number of articles, but they are edited all the times. You could think of people not knowing what they're doing, but trying their best. And then we have the ones with many edits and many articles. That would be normal, right? You write large uh, articles and you, you spend a lot of work on these articles. Saha, Farwis, Komi, and Vepsian, they are those. Then you have the group um, with many articles, but few edits. So North Sami and Livy, especially North Sami. So for North Sami, it's actually quite, quite many articles. It's number three here, but still for, behind each article, there is an average only a couple of edits. Whereas the other uh, Wikipedia versions have 10 times as many edits for each article. And then we have the Wikipedia version with neither edits nor articles, which is the dormant Wikipedias outside this table. So to sum up this talk, the circumpolar Wikipedia editions, we have Faroese and Saha and Komi, which are uh, large populations, large in this context, backed up by a strong native language administration, stronger than the rest, and at least some literary tradition. This results in many articles. Then we have Inari Sami and Vepsian. I haven't gone into Inari Sami now since there will be a separate talk on Inari Sami, but there is a strong revitalization movement uh, for both of these. There is help from the Wikimedia chapters. So we have many articles per speaker and many edits per article. 
For North, Sami, and Libby, you also have help from Wikimedia chapters in Norway and in Russia, but still there is only a small handful of active writers. And this results then in many articles, but little activity on each article. For Burja and Tuvan, potentially this could uh, be as strong Wikipedia versions as sort of the top group there, but the work isn't as organized, so there are relatively few articles. And then the rest, no involvement from speakers and little content and bad quality. So <laughs> Wikipedia needs speakers <laughs> to write. So conclusions to be drawn for Wikimedia. Minority language communities are not like other language communities. The literary tradition just isn't as strong. There always is the possibility to pick the stronger language as a language of writing, as a language of metalinguistic speculation instead, the language in which you explain things. And expecting these minority language communities to behave like the majority language communities will lead us astray. It, it's a fiction. These, these language communities are different. So a better understanding of the circumpolar language communities will partly improve our ability to offer Wikipedia to the language communities, if you understand them better, that is, and thereby, not across the board, but in some rare cases, contributing to strengthening the literacies. Thank you.